A key argument put forth to explain the popularity of interest rate swaps is called comparative advantage. And this is the counterintuitive idea that by introducing the swap, we can reduce the borrowing cost of each of the counterparties. My example follows John Hull's example in his chapter seven, where we have two counterparties, AAA Corp, which is the company that is a higher credit quality, and so they pay a lower interest rate in capital markets. And then Triple B Corp is the lower credit quality who pays a higher interest rate. And we have four specific assumptions that will illustrate this comparative advantage idea, specifically in fixed rate markets, Triple A Corp only pays an interest rate of 4%, and Triple B Corp, being lower credit quality, pays 5.2%, meaning Triple B Corp, having lower credit quality, pays an additional 120 basis points in fixed rate markets. Then in floating rate markets, Triple A Corp enjoys an interest rate of LIBOR minus 10 basis points, Triple B Corp needs to pay LIBOR plus 60 basis points. And now we can summarize the situation in terms of comparative advantage with an emphasis on comparative. And that is to say that, well, the more intuitive part, I think, is that Triple A Corp has a comparative advantage in fixed rate markets, meaning they pay fully 120 basis points less in fixed rate markets. That's where AAA Corp's comparative advantage lies. Maybe less intuitive is the idea that Triple B Corp here does enjoy a comparative advantage with emphasis on comparative because their additional spread here in floating rate markets is only 70 basis points instead of 120 basis points. So Triple B Corp has a comparative advantage here in floating rate markets. John Hall in the text quotes one of his students who summarizes this nicely, and that is that AAA Corp pays more or less in fixed rate markets, but Triple B Corp pays less more in floating rate markets. And so the quick tip I have here for you is that we just take a look at the spreads here, and the difference here is 120 basis points minus 70 is plus 50 basis points. If you take a difference in the spreads, that's gonna be the gross total advantage that the swap can confer. So that means that if these were equal, if the spread and the floating rate relative spread, triple B above triple A, was also 120 basis points, the difference here would be zero and there would be no advantage that the swap could confer. If we do have a difference here, then there is a gross advantage explained by the difference. In this case, then, the gross advantage is 50 basis points. I'm also going to keep the initial iteration simple and assume that the financial intermediary, that's the investment bank who's facilitating the swap, is going to charge nothing for that service, so that subtracts. And we also then have a net total advantage of 50 basis points. What does that mean? Well, that's the magic here of the comparative advantage. We could start here with AAA Corp, and the outward arrow here indicates or signifies that AAA Corp is borrowing externally in capital markets where it has its advantage, and that is in fixed rate markets. So AAA Corp is borrowing at fixed, 4% fixed rate. On the other hand, over here, B Corp is borrowing in external markets where it has comparative advantage. So B Corp is borrowing at LIBOR, plus 60 basis points. Then the swap here in the middle with the financial institution facilitating in this case with a zero uh, charge for its service. So there's also an implicit assumption here that these counterparties are going to split the net advantage of 50 basis points. If they split the net, adva if they split the net advantage of 50 basis points, then the fixed rate here on the swap is going to be 4.35%. So that means if we, let's take a look at AAA Corp. In the swap, they are going to pay a floating rate and they are going to receive the fixed rate. You might have noticed my fixed rates are colored in green and my floating rates are colored in orange to make it easier to follow. 
So triple A Corp is going to be the pay floating side here of this swap. And what is the net borrowing cost then when we consider the swap? Well, triple A Corp is receiving 4.35% on the swap, which more than covers its external borrowing of 4%. In fact, there's 35 basis points extra. So you can see that triple A Corp not only has transformed the fixed rate obligation on a net basis into a floating rate ob obligation, and that's another presumption here of the scenario, but also their net borrowing costs here for AAA Corp is now, you can see, LIBOR minus 35 basis points. Right, the LIBOR they're paying here, but minus 35 basis points, which is extra profit, so to speak, for them reducing this cost. Notice, LIBOR minus 35 basis points is a 25 basis point improvement on what AAA Corp could borrow directly in floating rate markets. So that's sort of the magic here of the comparative advantage. Similarly, let's look at triple B Corp. After, the, but in terms of the swap, they are pay, paying a fixed rate and receiving the floater. So we say we could say triple B Corp is a uh, is pay fixed. The LIBOR they receive is fully funding the LIBOR portion here, so that cancels as a way to think about that. And they are paying 60 basis points plus the 4.35%. And you can see Triple B Corp has transformed a floating rate obligation into a fixed rate obligation. And specifically, that fixed rate obligation is 4.95%. And notice, compare it to the 5.2%, which Triple B Corp would get on its own in external markets. This is also a 25 basis point improvement. So that 20, what happened is by, by virtue of setting this, because we had them share the net advantage of 50 basis points, each of the counterparties is improving its borrowing cost by half of that advantage or 25 basis points. And that really illustrates the magic of the comparative advantage. The uh, one other thing we could do just to round that out is to now have the intermediary come in and assume that they charge four basis points for the service. And you can see that now informs here the swap such that there is a four basis point spread here. Financial institutions is receiving 4.37, but only paying 4.33. They are pocketing the four basis points for the service per annum. And now AAA Corp, their net borrowing cost is LIBOR minus 33 basis points. You can see compared to this situation is a 23 basis point improvement. So they're getting half of the net total advantage and triple B Corp is now paying 4.97%. See 60 basis points plus this 37. And so they also, relative to the 5.2 they would pay on their own, enjoy a 23 basis point improvement. Each of the counterparties are getting half of the 46 basis point net advantage that is conferred by the swap and that 46 basis point is based on this difference here between these spreads minus the four basis point charged by the intermediary. So that's an introduction to comparative advantage offered by the interest rate swap. If the video is helpful, subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified of my next videos. Thanks.